how's it going? In this video, we are going to be applying Blur. Blur is a very fundamental technique not to take a scene and apply a uniform blur upon the whole image, but to take the scene, take a blurred version of the scene, and then later on combine that with creative effects to produce partially blurred images. But in today's video, we literally are just applying a uniform blur over the whole scene. That is how it is. So what we're going to have is we're going to start with the full scene that we had in a previous video in this playlist. Um, and I'm just going to just going to fire this up now. So if I go right up the top, let's give it a second. There we go right now. So this is the scene. It's a simple scene. You may recognize it from previously in the series got some geometry, shader particles, and Bezier surfaces, and curves, and things. There we have it. Right, so I want to take this scene, and I want to apply blur. Now, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm rendering the whole scene, and I'm rendering that off screen to a texture, a frame buffer, and then I'm taking the color attachment of that frame buffer and drawing it like an external texture, just drawing it back to the screen. The benefit of this is that I can write custom shaders which have access to this whole thing as if it was an image. Code will be linked down below as always, but if you are interested, I added in this frame buffer module here. So we've got this frame buffer class, we can do these things with it, we can build it, and the big functions here that I really care about are drawing to and reading from. So when I draw to a frame buffer, that binds it as the render target, the thing that's going to get drawn to. And by the end of the drawing operation, the color attachment is basically a texture. It will hold the result of that draw. And then I can bind that for reading with this read from function. Like I said, code is linked. You can go and have a look at that. But what I want to do is I want to apply blur. So what I'll do is I've got these shaders here, Blit, Fragment, and Blit Vertex. And what they're doing is they're drawing the whole screen. So the Blit Vertex is generating vertices just to cover the whole screen with a quad. And then the Blit Fragment is sampling from the texture to get the um, color at that pixel. So I'm going to go into this file here, I'm calling it Blur Fragment. Blur Fragment is going to use the same vertex shader, but I'm just going to modify the fragment shader. So the way I'm going to be applying my blur is with a uniform average. So let's say we've got a pixel. I will go around in a loop and sample a whole neighborhood of pixels near there, average their value, and that is the output that's going to go onto the screen. The benefit of this is it's actually really, really simple to set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define, first of all, the size of my kernel. Um, let's go let's float kernel size. I'm using floats just to make the uh, math a little easier so I don't have to do explicit conversions. Now let's say, for instance, that I want to pick a kernel size, total kernel size of three. So a three by three neighborhood, including the center point. So I'll just define that. And then for convenience, I'm also going to define the um, basically the half size of that. So what I'm saying here is we're including the point, plus we're including the point one to the left and one to the right, one above, one below, as well as diagonals. Cool. OK. Now, what I could do is I could add all these colors up and then divide, but another approach is to, if I know how many things I'm going to have ahead of time, work out a coefficient and then blend it together. So I'm going to have a coefficient, and this is basically one over the, whoops, one over the number of samples that I'm going to take. So if I've got a three by three kernel, that's nine samples, but I'm just going to make this more general. And there's one more thing that I'm going to need. Just for convenience, I'm going to define 
a small offset which will be used in sampling to get the texture coordinates of the neighbors. So I'm going to define two of these. I'm going to have, I'll call it dx and dy. So dx will be the vector which is just in the x texture coordinate direction, 0 0.002, I think. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter too much. It just needs to be a small number. And then for dy, it will be the same size, but in the y direction. Okay, cool. So now I'll start the blur operation. So what I'll do is I'll start my, well, why can I not spell? Why can I not type? Start my screen color at zero. If I don't do this, I'll possibly be accessing random memory uninitialized. This has happened in the past. It is a pretty cool effect, but let's not do that. And then I'm going to step around my neighborhood. So I'm going to have two nested loops. I'll go in the x direction first, uh, and not zero, no. Um, I want negative half size, because I'm going to start at the left, and then I want to go up to and including the right, just like this, incrementing. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to accumulate into that variable and I'll need to attenuate to make sure I'm taking the average and I'm going to need to perturb the texture coordinate by a little bit which I can do pretty easily using the variables here. So I'll go x just looking through that again yes I am happy with that so now I'm going to use this shader. So I'll just go to my engine and in my engine, see, I've got um, all of these different shaders, including this blur shader. This is the one that I'm going to use. I'll go up to the point where I create my shaders. What a mess, but there we have it. Okay. So you can see that I'm actually reusing the vertex shader from the blip. They use it. They, the vertex shader goes the same way. All the vertex shader does is it is invoked six times it gets the coordinates, the positions on the screen, and it passes along the texture coordinate. And it's, it's basically all we need to draw an image on the screen. Anyway, right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Got the blur shader that's been created. So I'll go down to my drawing section, and I know this is a mess. I'm aware of that. But right down at the bottom, I'm going to use my blur shader. So what I've been doing so far, if I go right up to the top of this, is first of all, I have this external frame buffer, I'm drawing to it. So then when I come to do my post-processing, I'm going to bind frame buffer zero, which is the default, that's the screen, basically. Anything I draw here gets presented on the screen. And then I'm going to specify that I want to read from the color buffer that I just rendered to above. So I think this should be fine. Let's give it a go and see if our blur shader is working. There we have it. Okay, so as you can see, it's, uh, it's blurring things. Let's go ahead and make this more extreme. Let's go with a kernel size of, yeah, let's go 15. So that'd be a half size of seven. Now, yeah, as you can see, we have got a more extreme blur. Now what, I might want to do is get a really extreme blurred version and then combine it with a less blurred version, do some creative effects. But there's one problem with this. It's not immediately obvious because performance is pretty good. I've got a good graphics card. It's fine, but it is more wasteful than it needs to be. The problem is that for every pixel I'm sampling 15 by 15. So I'm sampling 225 times from the texture. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose this into two blurs, two independent blurs. I'm going to decompose it into a horizontal blur and a vertical blur. So to start with, I will close this down. And what I'll do 
I'm just going to copy this. Why does it let me copy but not paste? Okay, I'm not going to copy this. I'm going to make a new file and I'm going to call this vertical blur fragment. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get all the, the blur stuff from here. This is a lot of fun, just a lot of copy paste. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take that blur fragment, I'm going to rename it to um, horizontal blur fragment. Okay, so you can see what we're going to do here. I'm just going to pare it down. So I'm looking in here, I'm thinking this is fine, but if I'm only going horizontally, then that's just a strip, right? That's just the horizontal strip, so 15 elements. So sampling 15 times, and obviously I don't really care about dy, and I can reduce this from a nested loop into just a single loop. What did that do? Just varying along the x. So actually, let's go ahead and work with this horizontal blur, verify that it's working correctly. I'll go over to my engine, and where I'm defining my shaders, I will just change this into I should probably do a video on how to organize this properly. This is a nightmare. This is a mess. Don't do it this way. Cool. So I've loaded that in and then right down here. Okay. Let's give that a go. Cool. Okay. So it's blurry. But as you can see, that's just horizontal. As a matter of fact, on the edges of these boxes, as I slightly move around a little bit, I can sort of see like some banding or something, like some weird artifacts. Yeah, that's definitely a horizontal blur. Very cool. Okay, so now let's do the same thing with the vertical blur. So I'll just go in here and I'll say, okay, just the same way, reduce our coefficient or increase our coefficient actually, um, and get the DX stuff out of there. Okay, now I'll go back to my engine and the same way that I had a horizontal blur shader, I will add in a vertical blur shader. Then I'll go back to where I'm loading all my shaders and I'll go ahead, I'll reuse this. So then what I'll do is I'll go right down to my drawing and instead of the horizontal blur, I'll put in the vertical blur and I just want to verify that this thing's working. Cool, yep, that definitely looks like a vertical blur to me. Okay, so now the job will be to combine these two shaders together. Well, I've got both my shaders. What I'm going to need is I'm going to need to render, but then use the result of the render. So I'm going to go with a ping pong structure where I have two frame buffers. One frame buffer is being read to, one frame buffer is being read from, and if I have multiple effects, I can actually chain this together and I can keep ping-ponging, but in this case, it's very simple. Anyway, so the way I'm going to achieve this is I'll have a two pointers to frame buffers, one named frame buffer A, the other named frame buffer B. Side note, never be afraid to have lots of frame buffers. In one of my projects that I'm working on, I've literally got 60, 60 frame buffers because I want to keep a second's worth of video backlog. They're cheap. You can do it. It's fine. Okay, so here I'll go ahead and create and build both of my frame buffers. What's that? Okay. Alrighty, so now let's redo everything. So at the beginning, I'm going to be pinging onto frame buffer A. I'm going to be drawing onto frame buffer A. Then I go da 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 right down the bottom and then see that I've got these calls which I'm using to set the state of drawing for my post processing. I want to really I'm going to really separate those out. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm actually going to yeah. Copy this over. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to do my horizontal blur. I am going to draw to frame buffer B and read from frame buffer A. 
do that thing. Then I'm going to do my vertical blur and I am going to output to the screen. But like I said, if I had further effects, I can just keep chaining along. So at the moment, because I drew to frame buffer B, I can now read from frame buffer B. And if I had further effects, I could draw that onto frame buffer A again and just keep going like that. But I'm happy and this will put the final result on the screen. So I can have a go and look at that. We get a regular blur. And I am outputting the frame rate here, but it makes no difference. The frame rate's the same for everything. But we do know that the result basically looks the same. We've gone from sampling 225 frame times per pixel to now sampling 30 times per pixel, 15 and 15. Center gets used twice. What can you do? Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so there we have it. This has just been a little demonstration of how to implement Blur in OpenGL shader programming. I hope you had fun, learnt some stuff, and I will see you again soon. Bye.